What's up everybody, Silver here with another Halo Master Chief Collection Achievement Guide. This time we're doing This Elephant Has No Breaks, which is in Halo 3 ODST, beat the par score on Coastal Highway. So this is definitely the most difficult uh, level in ODST to get the par score. I've had a few requests from you guys asking me to do this one, and here it is finally making its glorious debut. So just start off, follow this path that I took, and we're going to just run by all of the enemies in the beginning here. Obviously we could get our score up. Uh, by killing all these enemies, but we want to get our time multiplier uh, as best as it could get. So, throw some grenades to the right side of all those enemies so they dive to the left and away from this area where you're running through. Also, I forgot to mention, you want to grab one of those plasma pistols like I did out of that crate uh, back like 10 seconds ago. And that way you have a fresh one and you could noob combo as many brutes as you need to and obviously get them to stop shooting at you. And also, um, well yeah, that's about it. It gets you gets them to stop shooting at you, and you could obviously kill them with the headshot from a pistol to finish them off for some points. Obviously kill as many people as you can while you're running through, but you don't want to take any extra time to kill people. Because again, the time multiplier is what we're really going for in this level. So run over here as fast as you can. You want to try to save as much time as possible. Uh, I did waste like five or six minutes dying and trying out some strategies for a couple sections of this. But, you know... What are you going to do? I have some skulls on. Um, so just know that you could get this achievement even, you know, dying five, six, seven minutes and losing even that much amount of time. So I think I finish in about 30 minutes, roughly. Uh, the par score, or the par time, rather, is 25. The par score is 90 minutes. Ideally, you want to shoot for under 25 minutes, and that will get you your maximum time bonus, which is three times, a three times multiplier. But obviously that's pretty tough. I could have done it if I didn't die, but of course anyone could do it if they didn't die. Um, so just drive up here with this warthog to about here, get out, and then shoot as many grunts as you can. Keep an eye out for the fuel rod gun wielding grunt. And you want to shoot him first. Well, not first exactly, but you definitely want to shoot him soon because he is shooting fuel rods at you and could kill you with one blast from that. So watch out for that, and you actually want to go grab that fuel rod from him because we're going to give that to Buck. And I just got bumped by the Oliphant. If you didn't know what that reference was in the achievement title, it is actually the, uh, it's like an elephant, but it's that garbage truck version of the elephant called the Oliphant. So we've grabbed that fuel rod gun. We're going to give it to Buck. He's in the turret right now, but we're going to try to get him to go into the passenger side. I sped this part up because you can see it's going to take a long, long time for us to get Buck in here because he's a pain... He does not like to get in sometimes. It's really, really annoying. He just likes to get stuck there a lot, like right up against that uh, tunnel heading down into the road. So I'm trying to smack him to get him to go in. He's not having it. Shoot him a little. He still just goes back there. I don't know why he does this sometimes, but this has happened to me before. It's really frustrating. We're trying to save time, and he's just, you know, standing around doing nothing. So there he goes. He finally gets in. We're back to normal speed. No wonder they promoted him to a Spartan 4 for Halo 5. He's so intelligent. My god. So anyway, uh, he will start shooting at all the enemies. Grab these rockets. It's not 100% necessary, but I like to grab them. Why say no to rockets? So we have that. There's some health there as well you saw I grabbed. And this section, you want to just drive down and try to splatter the occasional enemy but don't go too crazy with it. You don't want to curve around too much while you're splattering people because obviously you have less momentum when you're turning, so you're less likely to splatter someone. So you want to kind of drive fairly straight. And then you want to hang back here for a little bit, totally dodge that power drain. And uh, that will allow some of the enemies up there to become distracted by Veronica and the Oliphant, so that's good. And you could just hang back and let Buck take care of most of these brutes. I'm going to drive down here while that door is opening for Veronica. Get a couple more kills. And things that get your score up are, first of all, the difficulty. I have this on Legendary. That gives you the most points. Uh, this section, there's, always, there's five sniper turrets, and there's always two occupied. And they're always random, which ones are occupied. So, unfortunately, uh, Veronica took out that one for us, even though she doesn't have a gun or anything. So I don't know how that worked. Maybe the, uh, the enemies themselves the killed themselves or something. I don't know. But we killed that one, so that's uh, the only two out of the five that are populated. 
and you want to drive up here, and we're going to wait for Veronica to catch up, because she is slow as the dickens. So like I said, Legendary gives you the biggest uh, amount of points for all the kills you get, so you want to be on Legendary for this. Also, things that get your skulls up are, or not your skulls up, things that get your points up are skulls. So I have on Tough Luck, I have on uh, Thunderstorm, and I have on Famine. So I only have three skulls on. You could add more if you'd like. Uh, most of the skulls add uh, more points and more multipliers to your points, so that's good. Except for the three silver skulls, which are I would have been your daddy, Grunt Birthday Party, and Cowbell. You can add those if you like, but they're not going to help out your score. So, in this area, I like to just go up in this tower and wait for all of those buggers to head towards Veronica. Most of the time, I get like a... almost a killion error, because they all bunch up near the cockpit. But they did not do that this time, unfortunately. Um, so I'm kind of freaking out. I have a pistol, but not much ammo. If you have Buck sit in the gunner seat at this point, he'll take them all out slowly. Uh, you can't really sit in the in the driver's seat and get all the points for all the ones he takes out, though, because it'll take way too long for him to take those guys out for you, and you'll probably just die. The buggers will shoot and kill you. So, normally... Uh, one of the drones will board Buck like he did there. And then all the others will fly at the garbage truck and you could shoot them and hopefully get a massive multi-kill. Which is another thing that will get your points up uh, more quickly is multi-kills. So double kill, triple kill, overkill, etc. Uh, this part of the highway you just want to wrap up to the right as fast as possible and then we're going to turn around and cut back and hopefully splatter all the enemies as they drop down. But I was a little late for that first wave, and then a little early for that second wave of enemies that dropped down. But in any case, we could still take out most of them here. Just keep driving back and forth to allow Buck a clear shot at a bunch of enemies, and you will get a bunch racked up for you. You want to try to avoid going off any jumps or stuff like that, though. Uh, obviously, because when you jump, you're more likely to flip. So you want to try to keep all four tires on the ground as much as possible. Unlike this, this is just silly what I'm doing right now, but... Uh, for this next part, I like to let Veronica get a head start. I'm going to grab some health here. There's always health in these uh, little tunnels right here, the segments where a new part of highway starts. Uh, so for this area, I like to let Veronica go ahead. So that way I could kill some more enemies behind me that I, I may not have finished off. And also so all these ghosts up here can become distracted by Veronica. If I go up here right away all the ghosts will be focused on me instead of this big garbage truck. So you can see right here, they're all focused and shooting at the garbage truck, and I'm up on this little plateau type thing in the middle of the highway. That's a good place to be because it gives you a clear vantage point to shoot all the ghosts. And also, if, they, if one or multiple ones turn to start shooting at you, you could easily just back down the ramp and become safe all of a sudden because that raised up part will be in front of you and in between you and the ghosts. So that's a good spot to be, and if you start getting shot at, just back up. And you'll become safe. I don't recommend flipping like that. Not what I intended to do. It takes three shots in general. Most of the time, it'll take three shots to kill a ghost with the fuel rod from Buck, which is good. So move up here. At this point, you get checkpoints most of the time when you enter these little areas. So hop into the passenger side of the Gosshog, and that will ensure that Buck gets out and gets into the Gosshog turret. And usually get a checkpoint right about then. Right there, there it is. And now Buck is in the back with a Gosshog. At this point, I like to bail and get in this Gosshog. There's one in the middle of the road here. So I just get in that and I take out some enemies on my own and I let Buck take out some enemies as well. This just thins out some of the enemies, uh, makes it much easier. There's also a couple health packs down to my right. I'm not getting the kills anymore or the points for the kills that Buck is getting. What is the garbage truck doing? He's like humping the shoulder. That is not where you hump. You hump other places. My god. Alright, well anyway. Uh, keep going. I was sort of distracted by that garbage truck. It must be springtime. Well, I guess it is springtime. Love is in the air between garbage trucks and 
shoulders of highways. So just keep going. Um, once Veronica starts to pass you in the middle of the highway there, uh, you can get back in Buck's Gosshawk and start driving him down here again. Uh, the reason for that is so you don't get too far ahead and all the enemies just focus on you. Uh, you want to use Veronica as a little bit of bait. So this is probably the most random and difficult section in the whole level. Uh, you want to park right about here and shoot this Banshee if he's shooting at you, which he normally is, and then immediately turn your attention to the Wraith. Uh, sometimes he might shoot at you, but uh, there's a good chance that he'll also just shoot at the garbage truck. So he shot at the garbage truck initially, way over my head, fortunately. And then you want to focus on him entirely uh, after you take out that initial Banshee. So you can see I took out that Wraith. You get a good amount of points for him as well. And uh, just move on. Uh, that Wraith is crucial. You want to take him out immediately. Because... Uh, if not, he'll just, you know, start shooting at you. And he's got a bigger gun than you, so not cool. So once you're done with that, once you killed the tank, you could, uh, the Wraith tank, you could speed forward and get this Scorpion tank. And uh, just start firing away at all the enemies. So you could ignore all the enemies as you drive in here. Hopefully Buck takes out one or two of them. But you could take them all out with the Scorpion once you get in the Scorpion. And you could easily take them out because it's a tank. And you want to try to take out all the enemies behind me at this point because um, they usually will follow you into this section if you don't take them out. So you can see that Banshee was starting to shoot at me again. So I had to turn around and take them out. There is a shade turret that I took out already in this section. There is an anti-air wraith in the middle here. So we're going to have to take him out. And hopefully Buck will help you out. He's helping me out a little bit here. Looks like he might not actually have connected with any of those shots, but at least he tried. Then there's a bunch of Banshees up here, and another Shade turret. You want to take out the Shade immediately, because the Banshees may or may not be shooting at the garbage truck, but the Shade definitely will be shooting at the garbage truck, so that's the first priority. You want to protect that garbage truck, or else uh, you could be restarting this section due to the Engineer dying. So I mentioned that uh, multi-kills help you out with your score increasing faster. That goes for Sprees as well. So try to get as many sprees as possible. Obviously it's great because you're not dying if you're getting sprees. So your time multiplier will be positively affected if you don't die. Uh, this next part, and you just get points for sprees in general. Uh, this next part, you want to turn to the right immediately and you can see these phantoms start to come in. You want to aim for the two quote unquote eyes of the phantom, which are the two engines. And that will take them out much more quickly. Also, they will sometimes drop off, if you kill them in the right spot, they drop off ghosts here, and you can take out those ghosts for even more points. Uh, and the phantoms alone are worth a ton of points, so that's really awesome that you could uh, kill four in a row here. Unfortunately, they're not going to drop off any ghosts anymore because they are kind of too far along in their little path. They're just going to drop them into the ocean over the side here, but that's fine. Uh, we got four ghosts. That was like four bonus ghosts we were able to kill, which is awesome. I didn't even expect that. I just discovered this in my uh, run through here. I knew you could kill the phantoms, but I didn't even consider the fact that they could drop the ghosts down here as well, and you could get even more points with those guys. So that's pretty sweet. But uh, going back to how to get more points is the fact that um, you could put skulls on. So I have the tough luck. I already mentioned this. I already mentioned this. Tough luck. Uh, thunderstorm and something else famine on uh, you can put more on if you like obviously putting on more gives you more points for each kill but it makes the game harder so it's kind of a trade-off however uh, comfortable you are with more difficulty uh, this next part only has two shade turrets if you took out all of those phantoms those phantoms we killed in the previous section are actually bringing those eight ghosts they were carrying over into the section we're in right now. So if you end up not killing any of those phantoms, there will be eight ghosts in this section. So that is lame because it is uh, much more difficult to go through a section with eight ghosts than one with only two shade turrets. Obviously it'd be nice if there were eight ghosts over here still, just so we could get more points, but obviously the phantoms are worth many more points, so uh, it's not worth it to just allow them to carry the ghosts over here. Kill the phantoms because they're more points. 
And we got those bonus uh, ghosts too as well that were dropped off on the highway, which was pretty sweet. So aim for that. And again, aim for the, uh, the engines on the front of the ship, which kind of look like eyes when they're coming at you. So this section is just a bunch of infantry, which is pretty easy to deal with, uh, especially when you're in a tank. Uh, so just take your time, fire at will, kill all of these people. You want to watch out, you don't want to push forward too quickly, because the last wave of enemies on this section of the highway are all brutes, and one of them has a fuel rod gun, so you definitely don't want to take too many hits from him. Uh, once the garbage truck that Veronica is in, and Virgil, passes by, some of the brutes fire will gain the attention of the garbage truck, or vice versa. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. The garbage truck will distract the brutes and they'll start firing at that, so um, it'll make it easier on you. Your life will become easier. This section, there are no enemies, so I'm going to hop out and I'm actually going to get in this warthog because it's going to make this next section quicker. I'm going to be able to save a little bit of time by getting in this warthog and driving to the end that way. So I skipped ahead a little bit. There's a scripted section where uh, the scarab climbs up on the highway and shoots at Veronica and the engineer and the garbage truck but that's like a scripted segment that takes like 45 seconds or a minute or so so I cut that out because you don't need to watch that you'll see it when it happens to you uh, it's pretty straightforward just keep driving and then go down into this tunnel and you will find yourself at the last exit firefight map uh, which is the last part of the entire campaign so go up here there's two sleeping grunts just assassinate them real quick and then we are going to go grab a plasma pistol whichever one has more ammo. So we have a noob combo going here. Well, not really, but we're gonna grab the rockets. There's health right here. There's four health packs around that little bench area. Grab the rockets. So I have a plasma pistol and rockets at this point. And we're gonna move down. You can see Buck has warped to our position. He was stuck in between the tank and uh, the centerpiece of the highway. But not to worry, he warps over here when he needs to. And we're going to give these rockets to Dare, which will make her better at defending the Engineer and just making this level go by more quickly. Or at least the end of the level. And uh, Buck should still have the fuel rod, so they're going to make a formidable team, actually. They're going to do a good amount of lifting. I don't mean, you know, gym lifting. I just mean, you know, the figurative speech version where they do a lot of the work. The heavy lifting, if you will. I mean, they're, they're ODSTs, so I'm sure they've been to the gym before. They've been to the Iron Temple, but, I mean, they're not doing it right now. But this Phantom comes in, and just headshot as many grunts as possible. Hopefully you get more than me. Uh, I got one, because I suck. But these guys will start coming in. Finally got a second one. But you want to watch out for the Brute coming in from the, uh, the tunnel down there. Uh, he hops out of the Phantom on the other side, so he's kind of further back, and he has a fuel rod gun, so he can kill you very quickly if you're not aware of where he is. Uh, at this point, you can move forward, just headshot the Grunts. This wave is just Grunts and Brutes, and obviously you could just noob combo the Brutes when they come up here. They're still hanging back there. I'm going to have to poke my head out over here. Took his shield down, but I still haven't killed him. Run away from that fuel rod. Fuel rod, or not fuel rod, plasma pistol that guy. And I was looking for a, uh, a glorious plasma right there, but that, that was not the case. These were, some, uh, these were some desperate plasma grenade throws as well. I'm trying to make this last section go by real quick, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the par score with this time. I don't know what my time is right now, so I'm kind of like freaking out, trying to make everything go by quickly. So that's why I'm kind of pressing up against this Brute right now. I normally do not close in on a Brute with only a pistol when I have no other weapons or grenades or plasma weapons. This is just silly. I'm hoping that they'll get distracted by, you know, Buck and Dare up there, but he's just not having it. So I'm running around like a crazy person. Finally found a fresh plasma pistol, or as fresh as it could be with the Famine Skull on. Noobed him. He put his weapon away, so that's nice. Grab this fuel rod and give it to Dare. So you could have a rocket launcher, which I'm not as concerned with having the rocket launcher. I just want to give Dare a fuel rod because it's better. Uh, she does better with it, so let them have cake. But in this case, let them have a fuel rod. So now Buck and Dare are just two lovers with two fuel rods. Where is this going? I don't know. Maybe they can make some kind of 
videotape. I'm not gonna, you know, drop what kind of videotape they'd make. That's for them to decide. They could do what they want with their fuel rods. So at this point, I'm just shooting some rockets. The phantoms are dropping off a bunch of jackals. So I'm just shooting rockets. Not really with any uh, particular plan in mind, other than to just hopefully kill multiple jackals at once. I'm aiming, I'm trying to aim for clusters of jackals. So you can see I got an overkill there, which is nice. And at this point, the jackals that are dropped off, some of them have carbines, some of them have beam rifles. So you want to check where I'm looking right over there to the right and also over to the left. I'm not sure if I killed any of the beam rifle jackals with any of those rockets, but I look over to the left and what do I find? I find three of them right over there. So that's actually great. Uh, normally there's one on one side and two on the other or vice versa, but this time there were all three up there. So I'm gonna grab the health up there on top of the building and I grab the sniper and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna grab a beam rifle as well. So I'm going to have a bunch of beam rifle ammo at my disposal, basically. Even though the Famine Skull is on and they don't have that much individually, I still have like a full beam rifle between all of these guns, so... That is awesome. Once the wraiths come in, like they are right now on the highway, you're totally safe when you're over here. If you're up where that sniper is, obviously they could, they could get you over there where the sniper spawns and I got the health up on top. They could even get you when you're a little lower. Um, but... In any case, I'm over here. Oh boy, that turret was taking some shots at me. So the jetpack brutes are very weak. They'll go down with one shot, or their shields will go down with one shot from the beam rifle. These other brutes will not. It'll take two shots for their shield to go down. But if you place the second shot on their head, it will kill them with only two shots. Because obviously the second shot will finally break through their shield and go through their head face, which is awesome. So just keep on firing. They're mostly distracted by the uh, by Buck and Dare and the Engineer over there. So if you're over here, they're pretty much not going to shoot at you. You might get a Carbine guy shooting at you, but that's about it. And that Berserking Brute came at me as well, but that's usually uh, not something that happens. It did happen this time, though, so it is something that could happen again. So be aware of that, but for the most part, you're pretty safe over here. Just try not to get uh, stuck or anything by a random Brute. So I think I've taken out all the brutes. Now I'm going to try to engage this chieftain. There's an easy way to take him out when he does his normal strike. That is not a normal strike. That's like an overhanded hammer blow. That is his normal move. He kind of hops and swings his hammer. And when he does that, you want to sidestep to the left and then just wrap around him and assassinate him for the easy kill. And that was the last one. And all you got to do now is head over here. You want to head over here as fast as possible because you want to get the time bonus as high as you can get it. So we're going to run over here. I'm throwing grenades over into the highway in hopes that it will randomly take out uh, one of the wraiths and be the final blow to one of the wraiths just to get a couple extra points. But that is not the case here. Um, but you want to run over to the section where the phantom lands. It doesn't really land, but it hovers here. And uh, you want to be here as soon as possible to cue the end of the level, and that way you get the best time bonus. And you can see right here, I almost got two times time bonus by finishing in a little over 30 minutes. So that is it, guys. Definitely the toughest level in this game in general, and also for getting the par score. But take your time. It might take a little bit of practice, but it's definitely doable. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Click like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Follow me on Twitter at Halo Completion, and I'll see you later for more achievements.